Now, back to what happened yesterday at the National Association of Black Journalists Convention when the orange scum, this white devil, this Christian maniac walked out on stage. He began his appearance with a shitty little typical Trump attack on the moderator, Rachel Scott, who is the senior congressional correspondent for ABC, a television network. Rachel Scott has forgotten more about politics than Trump will ever know. And Rachel Scott asked him immediately about his history of racist rhetoric. And the orange bastard responded like this, quote, I don't think I've ever been asked a question in such a horrible manner. You don't even say hello. How are you? Are you with ABC? Because I think they're a fake news network, a terrible network, and I think it's disgraceful, end quote. Oh, go fuck yourself, Trump. I mean, for real. It's his typical tirade. That was not addressed to Rachel Scott, by the way. That was addressed at the white little Christian devils that populate this country of ours who will vote for him this November 5th. Anyway, he went on to claim that he has, quote, done so much for black people. <laughs> yes, he has. And predictably, he had a uh, uh, glowing thing to say about Miss Faulkner, whom he described as a fantastic person. That was the uh, black person on stage handling part of the moderation, asking the questions from the Fox sewer. Then came the cavalcade, the waterfall, the rush of his filthy lies. Trump lied and said, Kamala Harris, quote, happened to turn black a number of years ago after decades of identifying only with her Indian heritage, heritage, which, of course, is utter, absolute bullshit. But Trump knows who he was talking to, and he knows that making statements like that get him the kind of attention from national media that is what he lives for. So he said it. Now, Kamala Harris, of course, is a historically black college school, a university, black college, university, HBCU, educated black woman. And yeah, she's known she was black since she was a child, like most black folk do. But the orange bastards claim fits right perfectly with right-wing dis disinformation claiming that Kamala Harris isn't really black. See, this is the thing that white people do. They make the decision. They're the ones that came up with the one-drop rule. You have one drop of Negro blood, you're black. White people determine the racial identification of people who are not white, right? which is utter, absolute, great big barrels of bullshit, but that's what white people do. So the claim from these right-wing Christian racist pigs is that Harris isn't truly black, even though her father is a black Jamaican. And, and this is where these dumb son of a bitches are, well, she's from Jamaica. <laughs> right. Right. Um. Now, the orange bastard lied, as he did during the presidential debate last month, and, and he lies all the time. He lied about what he calls an invasion of immigrants from jails and mental institutions taking black jobs. Now, when he was asked, I think it was Rachel Scott who asked him, you know, uh, what a, what a, what, what's a black job, you white devil? And if I remember right, his answer was something about Oh, black jobs are all jobs, <laughs> right? Uh, you got caught with your uh, uh, stepping on your own weenie, right, with that one. Anyway, um, the National Association of Black Journalists honors journalists from outside the United States, too. So you got to wonder how some of them felt about that claim, about immigrants coming from countries, and all they are are refugees from mental institutions and jails. He also lied, as he always does, about the stance by rational people in this country on abortion. He lied in claiming his party is in favor of being able to, or I'm sorry, that the, de the Democratic Party wants to, his word, execute 
babies. Oh, yes, we just, we have rituals. We non-mega fucks. We get together and we execute babies. Wow. He lied about the criminal cases against him. He claimed they exist only because he is, quote, I'm a political opponent of two people who have weaponized our justice system. And, oh, you know, Trump, when you finally go to jail, I'm going to be so fucking happy. He lied and claimed that those convicted uh, for trying to overthrow the government on uh, January 6, 2021, that their convictions show that there are, quote, two systems of justice in this country. Well, you ignorant savage, yes, there are two systems of justice. But there's one system for white folk and one system for black. You ignorant bastard, you. And when he wasn't just flat out lying, he was doubling down on on shit that he claims are going to be his policies when he gets the Oval Office again. For example, he was asked about his support. And this is another one that came out of Project 2025 of immunizing police from prosecution, no matter what they do. And that was in response to the recent police killing of Sonia Massey. You've probably seen the woman standing there in her night clothes while this great big hulking psychotic fucking white cop shoots her dead in her own kitchen. And she had called them because she thought there was a prowler outside her house. But the filthy pig cop, this great big white guy, and I'm not, I'm being very selective here. I've said many times I have cops or had cops, they're all dead now, in my own family. I have respect for the law. I have respect for what cops do, except when they do something like this son of a bitch did to Sonia Massey. And Trump said that that incident, quote, well, it didn't look too good to me. But he still didn't back off of what he's been saying lately about protecting police from legal accountability for abuse, even if that abuse is up to and including murder, like what happened to Sonia Massey. And this is, I'll give you a direct quote of what he said during the panel. He said, quote, if I felt or if a group of people would feel that somebody was being unfairly prosecuted because the person did a good job, maybe with crime or maybe a mistake, an innocent mistake, there's a big difference between being a bad person, making an innocent mistake. But if somebody made an innocent mistake, I would want to help that person. End quote. I think the implication from this filthy subhuman is that what this filthy racist cop did in murdering the woman in her own kitchen was an innocent mistake. All you have to do is look at the, uh, uh, the video taken from the, the camera on, uh, uh, on uh, the murderer's partner you know, the cop cam, whatever you call it. And you can see the whole thing up to and including shooting Miss Massey dead. Anyway, the fact that this was such a filthy event, it had been, that had been predicted by members of the NAVJ. Um, and it caused... Now, I'm, I'm just quoting from, uh, from black journalists. Uh, you know, I cannot speak for, obviously, the thoughts and attitudes and, and reactions of, of black folk or black journalists to a filthy event like this. But according to what I've read, having this filthy pig show up brought about distrust among members toward the leadership of the National Association of Black Journalists. Uh, there was even a protest outside the event. And one of the convention's co-chairs stepped down from her role and multiple speakers backed out of their panel discussions. And that's, you know, I said it was a two-edged sword. Granting this filthy 
pig, Donald Trump, a platform that everybody knew he was going to use to distort and lie and fuck up everything he could get his tiny little accordion fingers around. And he did that. On the other hand, it, it once again, it showed in a bright, hot spotlight what this filthy man is all about. And what he will do if he gets the presidency again. And even when he loses the election this November 5th, this filthy son of a bitch is going to try to seize it again. And this is where we, rational people in this country, I don't care your political persuasion or your religion or your lack of religion, but rational people, well, of course, if you believe some of this religious shit, you're not rational to begin with. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. Um, if rational people in this country don't resist, then this Nazi Christian prick will be president again because he is not going to concede the election when Kamala Harris beats his ass. So be prepared. Now, also, um, having this prick show up there, according to what I've read, it highlighted some of the broader uh, internal debates that have uh, gone on within the NABJ. Um, the Columbia Journalism Review wrote in 2018 that the NABJ has faced divisions over shifting paradigms in journalism, which pits some older members and other traditionalists against younger journalists who are attuned to the fast pace of news media, end quote. And, and I think what is meant by that is it's what I've said before. I've said on this podcast many times that traditional journalism, before the country decided that by all the evidence you could possibly need, that 30, 40 percent of our population is fucking insane. Um, back in the day, when if you present one side of an argument, you had to present the other. I experienced that when I worked at WSB Radio here. I've said before no matter what I said during my talk show that went on for three hours a night, five nights a week, once a month, management would give me a list of topics uh, about which I had to present an opposing view, something different, the exact opposite from what I had been saying. Now, I didn't – about a certain subject, about agriculture in Georgia, for example, how it was done wrong. It was poisoning the earth. If I had talked about that during the, uh, a particular month, then management would make sure that I talked about the benefits of using Roundup on the cotton crop and the peanut crop here in Georgia. So, uh, you know, I experienced it. And this was just back in the 80s. I mean, this is not ancient history, folks. So that traditional journalism that said, well, if you're going to present one side of an argument, you have to present the other in order to maintain balance that we journalists are supposed to maintain. Well, social media, and I hate the term, there's nothing social about it. Well, you know, uh, social media destroyed that. Uh, Facebook destroyed it. Instagram destroyed it. TikTok destroyed it. There is no possible way to prevent this filthy orange pig, Donald Trump, in any way other than what he truly is. He is a destroyer, a liar, an American fascist who is the most hypocritical of son of a bitches when he says, I'm a Christian. I love my little Christians. Oh, you little Christians. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Oh, aren't you cute? How do you, how do you present the other side of that if you report on that? Well, you can't. And that is part of the rift whether it's black journalists, white journalists, doesn't make any difference. The separating factor is age. So that rift within the NABJ was at play ahead of this convention that occurred yesterday in Chicago. Some were supporting uh, the panel, arguing that uh, the NABJ's tradition of inviting presidential candidates, even if it's a Christian Nazi fuck like Donald Trump, was justified. And critics of the panel argued that Trump's tendency 
to lie about every fucking thing and the fact that he is a fascist son of a bitch warranted, demanded a departure from the traditions of the NABJ. So I will declare that, uh, you know, I, well, I don't have to say this. You know this because you listen to this podcast. I'm completely with the second group. I said it's a two-edged sword exposing this rotten son of a bitch. But an honorable organization like the NABJ, in my humble opinion, I'm not a member. I'm not black. I'm not a journalist. But as an observer, as somebody who has been a journalist at times, who has worked in media for the past 45 years, I agree with the idea that a Nazi, filthy, America-destroying bastard like Trump should have his access to the public as tightened as possible. Christian, the filthy Christian right-wing media in this country will provide him all the fucking airtime he needs. The Fox sewer will provide all the airtime he needs. But reasonable media outlets and reasonable Organizations like the NABJ, I think, as a white observer, okay, a non-journalist white observer, I think they should snuff this fucking candle out to whatever degree they can. Hi, True Seekers. Mike Malloy here. You know, the Progressive Voices Network brings you commercial-free commentary from today's leading progressive radio hosts and pundits like me, Mike Malloy. 24 hours a day. I'm not your typical old guy from the 80s or the 90s talk radio host, and Progressive Voices is not your typical talk radio network. It's a listener-supported nonprofit with no corporate control whatsoever over our broadcast. So hosts like me, Mike Malloy, are free to rant and scream and carry on about whatever we like. We're often controversial But we're never boring. Weeknights, 9 p.m. in the East, 6 p.m. in the West, on the Progressive Voices Network. Always progressive, always on. I'm Mike Malloy. Keep it lit.